In the warm air and sunshine of the desert, the Royals are getting closer to opening day just 10 days away. Last night in front of the largest Royals crowd ever in surprise, the team looked in mid-season form as they beat the Dodgers. Today, the Royals make the short trip across town to Goodyear to face off against their division rivals, the Cleveland Indians. A beautiful day and a great day for spring baseball is next. Royals Spring Training on Fox Sports Kansas City is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Today from Goodyear, Arizona, it's the world champion, Kansas City Royals and the Cleveland Indians. Hi, everybody. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler with you. The Royals have nurtured a championship culture in Kansas City. They've been to the World Series in back-to-back -back years, but the only way you can maintain championships is through good health. Oh, you got that right, Fizz. And hey, in spring training, managers, they want the guys to get their reps and to get in shape, especially this particular time of spring. But that health is a beautiful thing so far for the Royals this year. And every single team in the American League Central has improved, and a lot of people are picking the Cleveland Indians to knock off the Royals this year. You know what? That doesn't matter to the Kansas City Royals, Fizz. However, the Cleveland Indians do possess a great starting pitching staff. They got guys that can throw that ball, 95-plus hard throwers. Of course, we all know how the Royals' offense handles those type of pitchers, as the Mets found out. But these they, they got a lot of skills. They've, they've got Brantley healthy. He should be their opening day starter. It's going to be exciting year for sure, and Cleveland will be right there in the mix. Danny Salazar will get the start for Cleveland, and for the Royals, Chris Medlin, the former Atlanta Brave, who pitched so well down the stretch for KC. It's spring training baseball, live from Goodyear Ballpark in Goodyear, Arizona, coming your way next.
Bowl on Fox Sports Kansas City is brought to you by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. By Menards. Save big at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by the Surprise Recreation Campus. The Campus of Champions. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler with you at Goodyear Ballpark in Goodyear, Arizona. Not as much wind as last night, Rex, when it was roaring out towards right, and we only had four runs scored last night in the Royals' 3-1 victory. But Kansas City, led by Alcides Escobar in their batting order, will face Danny Salazar. He's more of a strikeout pitcher with 18 strikeouts in only 13 spring innings. Yeah, you know, the Kansas City Royals know all about Salazar. It's 93 to 95 on our fastball. You know, he's got a nice little slider, good changeup, and he's, his changeup almost looks like a split finger. It has some very good downward action. But, look, it's a spring training day. Gorgeous out. Guys will be looking for a piece of cheese out over the middle, Fizz, and get on the backside and drive it. And there's a look at their defense. Perez will be the catcher with Carlos Santana playing first base and the rest as expected. Kipnis, Lindor, Uribe is the new third baseman this year. And Will Venable, Tyler Naquin is an interesting story in center field and Marlon Bird in right. Carlos Torres will be calling balls and strikes. And uh, Royals batting order with Alcides Escobar leading things off, and he's magnificent going after that first pitch. He is, but last night he didn't like the results of that first pitch fouling off his foot, man. That you was, got that right. That was not good, but he he's okay. Didn't didn't uh, set him back at all. But Salazar one and one in spring ball, but he has struck out 18, as I said, in 13 innings. And Esky goes after the first pitch and fouls it out of play. Strike one. You know, the fact that Eski is known now to swing at the first pitch, that really eliminates a lot of thinking for the hitter. I mean, there's lots of times I let off and I went up to there going, well, am I going to swing at the first pitch or am I not? And the fact that he does every time, that, that just tells him when he gets in that batter's box, he's going to hack. Well, he had tremendous success, particularly in the postseason, not only leading off games, but swinging at the first pitch. And, of course, he was named the ALCS MVP in the championship series against the Toronto Blue Jays. Salazar gets the pop-up. Santana drifting over in foul territory. Has plenty of room and makes the catch for out number one. The Royals are 11 and 13 after winning last night. The Cleveland Indians come into today's play with a record of 10, 10, and two ties. And much like we saw last night, their defense will shift for Mike Moustakas, although the third baseman, Uribe, will stay a little closer to the bag because Mike showed bunt uh, three times last night. Even with two strikes. Twenty two home runs eighty two driven in last year and it's a little bit easier to use the opposite field against a guy like Salazar that throws so hard unless it's in on your hands anything out over you know you just take an easy swing you'll hit it to left and especially with Moose's new profound hitting stroke to left field and that number two spot fits him perfectly. And we've watched all the games in spring training, and he's taken several line drive base hits the opposite way. He does pull this one and pops it up right side. Lindor, the shortstop, over on the second base side, will make the catch, and very quickly, two outs in this first inning. Now, Salazar, in his last start, HUD, he took a line drive off his left arm, struck by Joey Votto, and he has a bruise on the inside of his left fo forearm. Mm, well, better his left arm than his right. Yep. Salazar gave up five hits and four runs in four innings against Cincinnati. Kendris Morales with a good camp hitting 262. His first home run last week, batting from the right side. Oh, 
And HUD, one of the things that Morales does, he is like uh, another coach in that dugout talking with some of the young hitters. Absolutely. He's a veteran. He's got a lot of wisdom. And the fact that he's been in, in uh, America now for the last 10 years, his English is really good. And then he smacks it to right field, but perfectly playing him is the second baseman, Jason Kipnis, who throws him out. So Salazar with a 1-2-3 first inning. start for Kansas City. He's been very sharp in Surprise Arizona. His record 1-1 one and one with a 4 ERA. Last year, all of his appearances were after the All-Star break after he returned from his second Tommy John surgery. But HUD down here, the one thing that has been so impressive is pinpoint command where he's been able to locate his fastball on both sides of the plate and down. Yeah, you know, we saw that last summer at the K when he when he pitched and won six games for the Royals down the stretch. But this is a whole different situation now. He's gonna have a full season in him. He's you know he's he's not it's not gonna be interrupted by the, the rehab of his injury to his second Tommy John surgery. So he should be excellent and ready to go. I love his tempo. He gets the ball and throws it. He's an athlete. He can field his position and what a nice addition to this Royal staff from the very get go. He's facing Carlos Santana, and we were very interested to see Santana in the leadoff spot. Why? Well, you know, Terry Francona, you know, is a guy that, he says this is a guy that walks 100 times, might as well lead him off. I mean, sometimes we, we witnessed, even with runners on base last year, that he would rather take the walk than knock the, the run in. So we were like, okay, thank you. He, he's a run producer. He's got really good power from both sides of the plate, as Royals fans remember. That, that, that heck of a series he had there a couple of years ago. Uh, he can swing that bat. Had 11 stolen bases, but you know, he's not your going to be your prototypical type leadoff hitter. And Francona is still evaluating that decision. He's not sure if it'll be Santana or go back to last year when Jason Kipnis will be the leadoff guy. Medlin misses low. Chris coming off a very good start against the Dodgers on the 17th of March. Gave up one run, three hits in four innings. No walks, four strikeouts. But he's fallen behind Santana. Carlos takes a rip and the count is full three and two. That's going to be a spring training souvenir. Got another great crowd on hand, even though the Royals are on the road. They're really popular here in Arizona after back-to-back -back World Series appearances. They had a record crowd for the Royals at Surprise Stadium last night in that victory over the Dodgers. It's great to be there. And that will get to the second baseman. Medlin will cover, and that's a nice play. Cologne to Chris Medlin. Talked about Medlin's athleticism, his quick tempo, the way he can feel his position. Right on cue. 
nice effort by Kendrys Morales. Like to see him get a little spring training dirt on that uni. And that's a nice play there by Cologne out in shallow right field. Good little spin throw. And timing is always important. And just <laughs> able to keep his foot on that bag. I wanted to watch it drag across that bag because he was waiting for that throw. So here is Lindor, the shortstop who was called up midseason last year. And he was outstanding. Boy, we had a chance to watch him in a couple of series, both in Cleveland and Kansas City. Very impressive rookie. Hit 313 last year. He's hitting 286 this spring with no home runs, seven driven in. You know, so much that revolves around the success of a young player. Terry Francona will tell you, you got to have the right mental attitude. You got to have that positive feel, the positive vibe, but also up here. Oh, he might, might, he might have got that. He sure did, and that is his first home run this spring. Francisco Lindor, who hit 12 for the big league Indians last year in the regular season hits his first of spring training and Cleveland has the early one nothing lead. Yeah, I was saying this guy's he's positive. He, he he knows that he's that he's uh, the premier shortstop for their team, but he came in with the attitude. Hey, I got to win me a job I like that for just a second year player. He hasn't even got a full year in yet. He's going to be a superstar player. There's no question. So Cleveland with the early lead. Now, Jason Kipnis, we were talking about Jason being the leadoff hitter. Today, he is hitting third for Francona. Only a 216 average this spring. Last year, hit 300, 303 in 2015. He calls this area home. He played at Arizona State just down the road on Interstate 10 in Tempe. And he smacks that one well to center field, and Paulo Orlando is back. And it's off the top of the wall. Gone. And they say, oh, yes, it is gone. It was just above the yellow line. So back to back home runs by Lindor and Kipnis. Put a nice easy swing on a fastball down the middle and Medlin not really working on anything specifically this spring except to fine tune is what Dave Island told me just to kind of fine tune his fastball curveball and change up leaving it right down the middle dead center field ball flies here nice thin air but you got to hit it you could tell by the sound couldn't you. There is Ned Yost. He really likes what's taking place in his uh, clubhouse. He thinks this might be a better team than last year, even though they won the world championship. Those guys a year older. Guys like Perez, Mustakas, Hosmer, Lorenzo Cain, more experience. Oh, and, and after that ascension to the top of the mountain, Fizz, mm, that purified air smells great. So many of the players say have told me that once you get there, there's nothing like it. Nothing else matters at all. Just win. Van Conner knows a little bit about that. 1-2 with the Red Sox. Mike Napoli, this is a good addition for the Cleveland Indians. A veteran guy now at the age of 34. Played for both the Red Sox and the Rangers last year. No, he should be good. He is not just a one-dimensional designated hitter. He's got a nice soft glove at first base, too. To third, Moustakas has it. And there's two out. <laughs> Another veteran that Cleveland was able to pick up in the offseason is now stepping to the plate, and that man is Will Venable. Last year with the Padres and Rangers. And obviously helping Texas to that American League West title. Oh, 
First pitch runs away, ball one. Medlin so quick coming out of his delivery. He's got a nice little follow through, but he's very quick with his arm swing. Ball gets on the hitter pretty pretty quickly. And, and you know, we saw Chris Young last night. The depth to his slider was really impressive as he struck out. What did he strike out? Five, six batters? Five batters. Yeah, he had that uh, good downward action. Looks like Medlin hasn't been able to find any kind of a feel to his curveball yet. And Rex, so you're right, because basketball. I'm just watching off the monitor, and his command was so precise in that game against the Dodgers where he was hitting his spots both inside and downside. But he's been missing a little bit thigh and belt high. That's a curve, and where was that? Not sure. Wow. That's what Medlin was saying. But he gets back up there, slaps that ball in his glove. That's a good pitch. So now a 3-1 count, and he was consistently ahead against the Dodgers and finishing them off. Now a foul ball by Will Venable, and it's a 3-2 count. Chris Young went four and a third innings of no-hit baseball, but threw 78 pitches, so he had to come out, and this is a long inning for Medlin. And then he walks Will Venable. When Chris is good, when he misses, he misses down. Where the opposition can't hurt him that much. Now, just watching him here through this first inning, 24 pitches. His lower half is ahead of his upper half. He's, you know, he's out in front. And his, his arm's dragging and he's leaving it up in the zone. And that's pretty much explains it. The Cleveland Indians' newest addition is Marlon Byrd, hit 23 home runs last year in a split season with Cincinnati and San Francisco, tried to help the Giants to get back to the postseason. They did not. But what does Marlon bring? Byrd brings experience at 38 years old and also some pop. Had a good year last year. He's a, a good leader. I like the way the guy hustles. He always has. And he's, let's see if he's got anything left. There's a nice little short breaking ball. And Rex, I'm guessing that he's going to platoon in the outfield with Lonnie Chisenhall. It's possible in right field. You know, they could do that. It depends on how hot either one of them get. And hopefully Bird will impress enough to make the team. But, you know, they should have, you know, if, if Marlon Bird looks like he's in good shape, he, he'll, he'll make the team because he's, he can do too much. He's got really good power, and they're going to need some of that. Chisholm Hall hasn't had much of a spring training. That's not hitting very very well. But he is a left-handed bat, and that's where they're talking about a platoon. And Marlon Bird, as you said, at the age of 38, Francona can't play him every single day. You completely wore out at 38, didn't you? Oh, stick a fork in me, Fizz. <laughs> I was way done. And it happened to be for Terry Francona and the Philadelphia Phillies. Ooh, nice breaker. Bird swings and misses, and Medlin with his best pitch of the first inning. He did give up a couple of home runs. One to Lindor, and the other to Jason Kipnis. 2-0 Cleveland.
the Royals want you to follow the team to Philadelphia, Boston, or New York this summer. Royals Destinations fan packages are available now and include great game tickets, hotel accommodations, VIP ballpark tour, and a meet and greet reception with a Royals player. Visit Royals.com slash destinations or call 877-698-8695 for more information on these VIP Royals Destinations experiences. Alex Gordon goes after the first pitch he sees, pops it up into shallow left center field, and overcomes Will Venable, and he'll make the catch. So that's four up, four down for Danny Salazar. Royals are swinging early in the count, knowing that they're going to get a fastball, and they've been getting up underneath it, popping them up. And Salazar, so tough. I mean, last year, Rex, he threw 185 innings and only gave up 156 hits. Struck out 195. He's tough. He beat the Royals, but they beat him too. Yep. So. And, and, you know, when you think back to last season and the world champion Royals, they beat every ace they faced once at least. Salvador Perez suddenly picking things up after a tremendous year last year with 21 home runs. He's hit three home runs in the last week, including one last night down that left field line, and surprise. Foul back. Let's go back and take a look at it. Yeah, you know, he, he went down and got it. Had a little lift to it. Love the crowd's reaction. I remember the count was three and one, and it's almost like Sal was looking dead red fastball, got the pitch he wanted, and squared it up. Now battling a guy he will see quite often this year in Danny Salazar, who made 30 starts for the Tribe last year. How about that? That is a beautiful knock, and Perez will just hold things up at first base. He just lobbed it out there. Of course, Salvi, the bad ball hitter he is, took that pitch that was four or five inches off the outside part of the plate and doinked it right out there perfectly. Now Paulo Orlando, and he will be in that mix for the right field starting spot, likely facing a lot of left-handers, and the Royals have a real battle for a backup position, but Paulo is such a great competitor, and because he was so late to the game, Rex, as soon as the World Series was over, he continued to work out and played winter ball again. Gotta love his focus. He's got a long way to go. He's got a a wife and a future family on the way. He's he's focused. I like that. He wants to be a baseball player and he wants to get 10 years in the big leagues. He's going to have to really work at it. He's now 30 years of age. This is his second big league season. It's seven home runs for Kansas City and now facing Salazar. You know, he's hungry. Watching him play last summer was a breath of fresh air. Every single play, every ball hit to him. He was 100% like it was his last play he's ever going to make. He did not like that call from Carlos Torres, now, but you know, now down in the count. His managers like players that don't become complacent. They're not they're not happy with what they did last year. They're, they want to continue to try to improve and get better. That's a really nice changeup. That's that, that's that changeup split finger like action. It'll fool anybody. Gets a lot of strikeouts with it. But he stays with the fastball, and it's bobbled by Lindor. And... Uh, Salvador Perez is forced at second base. They have no chance to get Orlando, and he was doing exactly what you talked about, Hud. He was roaring down that line. Yep, that's the one thing you can control, that hustle. That ball hopped up on Lindor. But he's quick enough to get the lead out. Well, we were talking about the right field battle, as you see Perez going in. Who's had a terrific camp as the ball gets away, but no advance by Paulo. 
Ray Fuentes now comes up, Hud, and he has had a very fine spring and really pushing things to make that mix and make it to the big leagues with Kansas City after having some time with San Diego. Last night was the first time I've gotten a chance to see him play, and I just loved him trying to score first to home on that ball that got cut off in the gap by the Dodgers. They made a nice play on him, but I think he was safe at home. But to see that speed, that's a beautiful thing. So as we see Lindor unable to start that 6-4-3 double play and the inning continues with the Royals trailing 2-0. Pitch is a bit high. As we take a look at the right field mix, here are the guys in the mix. Ray Fuentes, we talked about him. He's hitting 387 with a couple of home runs this spring. But how about Merrifield and Snyder? Merrifield is a is a baseball player. So is Fuentes. Snyder's more a little bit more one-dimensional. He's more of a power type of hitter. Uh, hasn't had as many at bats uh, to really show what he could do this spring, but they're all good ball players, especially Merrifield. I mean, you know, this guy can play anywhere for you. you all, he's an extremely valuable player to have. He's a little like Luke, Willie Bloomquist. Yeah. You know, Willie didn't develop late in, in his career and with Merrifield, now 27 years of age. And the Royals love him because they said he is just a ball player. He can play all four infield spots and three outfield spots. Fuentes can play all three outfield spots and can run. So he's a guy who can pinch run late. Versatility is extremely important for a manager. However, for the player, there's going to be opportunities. Even if you can't make this team, there'll be opportunities later down the line. You've got to stay ready. Stay hungry. Keep trying to push. I remember when Ray came up with the Boston Red Sox, he was a first-round pick, and there were a lot of people comparing him to Johnny Damon or Jacoby Ellsbury, and that's saying a lot, or Gregor Blanco. But he has to prove it. He's only 25 years of age. Well, you know, a lot of times the physical skills are there, but it's that delicate mental muscle that keeps some guys down. But this kid seems like he's going to be a big leaguer. He's Good gonna, swing there. Yeah, he's got, he's got plenty of t tools. There's no question about it. Now you mentioned Johnny Damon. The Royals brought him up from double A, and he never went back to the minors. So he was ready. He was he was mentally ready. Same same way with Beltron. Belt Carlos Beltron, same thing. They brought him up from double A and, and he never went back. So and Carlos is a cousin of Ray. That's what I'd heard that. That's good genes in the family. He had 29 stolen bases at Omaha last year. The runner goes, pitch foul back. And I like his short, compact swing. You know, there's not a lot of room for error with that stroke. And when he sets up from behind the screen up where we are, he, he kind of looks a little bit like Alex Gordon in his starting position. As we see Mickey Calloway, that's the pitching coach for the Cleveland Indians. Back up the middle, and that will find center field. Orlando put the brakes on. Fuentes comes through with yet another base hit. A little squibber, but that ball had eyes on it. It's a perfect place to hit it right back up the middle with that hole. Now, Paulo, I'm not so sure why he stopped. He could have walked into third base. And Jersh Lee was sending him, and Jersh, he was wondering the same thing, why he didn't keep coming. I think Paulo at first thought one of those middle infielders would knock down that slow roller, but it just got past them. So now we'll see the right-hander and Cody Decker, who's been playing first base. He can play a corner outfield spot. He's the DH today. Eric Hosmer given the day off. He had BP this morning. Decker had a nice swing last night. He's got some pop, man. This is beautiful. I mean, this ball was lined out there on the line. This is the one that Fuentes tried to score from first base on. And I think we, they would have had a replay if this was in the middle of the season. Decker wanted that ribby there. I'm sure you guys talked about it, but Cody's just a delightful guy. 
and a young man out of UCLA studying to be an actor. He's not getting any fastballs from Salazar, at least not yet. Nope, a couple of off-speed pitches. And after that last one, he may go stay with that same pitch. Or could nope. come upstairs. Yep. No, he went back down with that breaking ball. I remember when Danny came up, HUD, fastball slider. That was it. And then, as you said, he developed that split change, and it is a monster pitch now. Either one of those two pitches, if a, if a starter has that, and that's a, a good pitch, that's, that's one of the best pitches a guy can have, really. You got to have the fastball, no question, and all big leaguers, most of them have it. You know, there's a few guys that under rotation that might throw 90, but nowadays most everybody throws hard. But to have that off-speed pitch to, to keep those hitters off balance is really a special pitch, especially if you have command with it. Roberto Perez, the catcher. That's three straight off-speed pitches thrown to Decker in this at-bat. Count two balls and two strikes. Just barely got a piece of it. You can see Decker shorten up his swing a little bit there. Just trying to knock that run in. Shorten it up with two strikes. But you know, a guy like Decker, he doesn't want the lousy single. He wants to clean the sacks off, including himself. He wants to get a pitch he can drive out of the yard. That's what opens up eyes. Boy, they are really staying away from him. Not one pitch inside, and the count is now full three and two. So right now, he's thinking as he's going to get in the box. He's going, all right, fastball's coming. Two on, two out, both with good speed. Guys will be going. He could, Salazar could try to trick him with that split finger changeup. He tried and didn't work. How about that? He just kept going away, 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 away. Most off speed. And there was the slider and the changeup. So Christian Colon, he steps to the plate with the bases loaded and the chase for second base. He and Omar Infante, the veteran, have been battling for that spot. Infante did have the elbow surgery in November, completely healthy. They brought him along slowly. Cologne, Hud, look at those numbers. He started 0 for 23, and I did most of those games on radio, and that guy had more lineouts than I've seen in years. He yeah, was now, in the ball pretty well. Yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate, but look, Ned's not looking at spring numbers as closely on some guys. As long as he's hitting the ball, that's all he wants to see. And, of course, he had that base hit that gave the Royals the lead in the clinching game of the World Series over the New York Mets. Broke that tie. And Salazar all of a sudden has gone wild. Went 1-2-3 with the Royals in the first inning. Now, from the stretch, really laboring. And Mickey Calloway and Terry Francona a little concerned. Perez comes out for a visit as well. Now he's rushing a little bit. No, actually, he's from the Dominican Republic. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's a little bit ahead of his arm. And his split finger is not able to, or the changeup is not able to command that. And the Royals aren't biting on it. Cologne, good soft hands. He's just trying to line one out there. Christian, though, pops it up. Shallow right field, but they've lost the baseball. And finally, the right fielder finds it. But the second baseman, Kipnis, threw his hands in the air as if to say, I can't see where it is. 2-0 Cleveland.
Hey, Physioc Rex Hudler with you on a warm, sunny afternoon in the desert. The Cleveland Indians hosting the world champion Kansas City Royals. A couple of home runs off Medlin in the first by Lindor and Kipnis. And now we'll see the bottom of the order. Juan Uribe, Tyler Naquin, and Roberto Perez. Uribe, they picked up in the offseason. He played for three different clubs last year. The Dodgers, the Braves, and finally the Mets. Yep, he's a veteran that can swing that bat. That's for sure. He can play pretty good third base. He's a veteran. Looks like he slimmed down a little bit, too. Well, he's been a champion in the past and a very, very good teammate, we understand. But at the age of 37, if he needs a day off, Jose Ramirez is having a great camp who can fill in at second base, shortstop, and third. Ramirez will be their utility guy. Rebe with just nine spring training at bats and three hits. Well, he takes a mighty whiff at that one, and Medlin with back to back strikeouts. Fans, if you want to host your company, family, sports team, or other groups out at the ballpark for a specific occasion this spring, single game suites and party areas are now available for regular season games throughout the month of April and May. Call 816-504-4040, option 4, or email groupsales at royals.com for rates and availability. And how about this year, HUD, where the first time in Major League history, the two teams that met in the World Series open the next season. Ah, it's Ned Yost thing. against the Mets. Sure is a great opportunity for the, the Royals, especially to get to receive their rings. Oh, man. Oh, well, well struck by Naquin, and he hit a monstrous home run. That is his first of the spring. Guy bidding to be their center fielder this year, and Medlin has given up three home runs in the first two innings. Taking advantage of that little breeze blowing straight out of this, this ballpark here at Goodyear. Again, it's the fastball right out of the middle of the plate. Hitter's the first one to know it's out of the park, and the pitcher's the second. Now Roberto Perez. He'll be ticketed to back up to Jan Gomes this year. Medlin expected to be one of the five starters this year, but the Royals may go with a four-man rotation early. And they're not sure who will be the opening day pitcher. Yordano Ventura or Edinson Volquez. Five off days in the month of April for the Royals. That's a lot. And it's like that typically to start the season. Royals with three off days in the first week. You know, that's that's not when you want them, you know, really. You, you'd rather have those later in the season. You guys are struggling a little bit. Makes a terrific pitch to Perez to get the swing and the miss. But your Donna Ventura will pitch a minor league game tomorrow, then go again on Tuesday, which would line him up for opening night versus the Mets. Meantime, Volquez is pitching a minor league game today, then will go again on Monday. So he could also go just with an extra day's rest. And Ned Yo simply says, we will make any decisions until we have to. Swing and a miss by Perez, so he's had three strikeouts for his last three outs. Fortunately, he's allowed three home runs. Three strikeouts now for Chris. But Hud, you, you, you think of Ventura, Volquez, Ian Kennedy, Chris Young, Chris Medlin, and if they uh, have a need for another starter, and you never have enough pitching, but... Dylan G has had a fine camp. Danny Duffy, Chinman Wong started in the past. Yep, I've got some depth there. Yeah, who's going to be the Ryan Madsen this year? Could it be Dylan G or Chinman Wong? 
Hit to right field. <laughs> Raymond Fuentes will make the catch in the inning. Another home run by the Indians. Tyler Naquin. Three nothing try. joined us here is our game summary and it's all about the Cleveland power as Medlin has made three bad mistakes and they have been all over them. Yeah but they're all fastballs and this time of spring training you know you're just trying to fine tune that fastball and you're going to use it more because you know what the stats don't count on the back of your bubblegum card. So there's no worry no sweat and these guys are, are big league hitters they can hit that fastball you know it's going to be sure you don't want to give up homers but you know, this is spring training, and it's time to work on a few things. And Chris's strength has always been his great command. I remember his days with the Atlanta Braves, and my goodness, he had great command. One year, he allowed only six total home runs in 138 innings. That was the season in 2012 when he went 10-1 and one for the Braves. Right now, it's Salazar against the top of the order, Alcides Escobar, who's down in the count 0-2. Tries to flip one to right field, but it's foul. Salazar was signed by Cleveland in 2006 at the age of 16. Made his major league debut in 2013 against Toronto, and he was fantastic. Took a no-hitter into the sixth inning. all heard about his electric stuff down in the minor leagues. Also struck out seven in his debut and that was the most by a Cleveland rookie in his debut since Luis Tion struck out 11 in 1964. Chopper to lean door. He'll handle it. And there's one out. Was there a pitcher, HUD, who you saw may have been his major league debut or the first time you saw the, the, the pitcher and you said, oh, my gosh, this guy's going to be impossible? <laughs> well, you know, there were a lot of those guys <laughs> for me. For me, everyone was really good, it was, and they're tough to hit. But, you know, Pedro Martinez, no question, Hall of Famer. You know, um, let me see who else. You know, Randy Johnson, you could tell that, you know, he was going to be good if he could ever find his command. And he started his career with the Expos, and then he went off to Seattle and, and became the big unit. And you guys were roommates in the Montreal organization. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to, to be able to know him um, from the very beginning and to watch his career. has been really special to see him become the Hall of Famer that he is. He still lives in this Arizona area. And quite accomplished photographer now yeah good guy a lot of fun uh, good sense of humor you know you can get on him and he's an easy target because he's so big and, you know and his, his hair was long and 
we he, we used to get on him all the time, but not so much anymore. And guys ended up being a little bit fearful getting in that batter's box against him. Particularly a left-hander like Mustakis and Mike. It's a high drive to right center field. Naquin. Low wind. That's out of here. They say you can touch them all. He hit high off the wall, but hit the the yellow line and then came back on the field. And if it's on or over the yellow line, it's a home run. And so Mike Moustakis with his second home run of spring training. Yep. He had a lot of height on that. And with that wind blowing out to center field, I mean, it's not gushing out like it was last night. But still, any kind of height on a ball hit that direction has a chance. And you really have to credit the second base umpire Tom Woodring for sprinting out there hustling out there and making that accurate call. Yeah with no replay in spring training you know that's they're really counting on the umpires to get that call right. You know, go, Moose. You, you know it's funny is uh, last night we had a wind roaring out gusts of 35 miles an hour just roaring out to, to right and we thought we might have seven or eight home runs and the score would be 12 to 10 we had one home run it was hit to left field not to right field and today really not much win and we've already seen four home runs only played two plus innings yeah and I looked at that win yesterday and I, I knew Chris Young was pitching you know he's a fly ball pitcher and I was thinking the same thing but he, he had such great depth to his slider that they, they couldn't touch it his command was perfect yeah, one of our coaches texted uh, Jeff Davenport during who's, who's the uh, equipment manager and traveling secretary as Morales gets his second hit or his first hit of the day. But they yeah. texted Davy that during batting practice that we spent about $10,000 in lost baseballs that were hammered over the center and right field wall. I mean, Hosmer, Moustakis, Perez were just smashing them out. And the fans were loving it. They were yeah. all lined up beyond right field collecting yeah. those souvenirs. Yeah, they all go out there in the spring training uh, facility on the, on the backfield, and they just kind of all spread out. And they fight for those balls. And that's a good thing, though. Right there, I can tell you Terry Francona was pretty happy that that ball didn't find a piece of Salazar. Off the bat of Morales? Yeah, that ball came really close to his, his foot. Here's Alex Gordon popped up to left field first time up. Rex, interesting question for you, and I talked with Alex a little bit about this morning. With the Royals having back-to-back -back extra months, being in the World Series in 2014-2015, does it change the preparation in the offseason when you get into baseball activities? Yeah, you know, it, it, it does, but it's a mind thing. Uh, you, you just tell yourself, hey, look, I, I feel good. Depends on how you feel. You, you need two, two weeks, sometimes three weeks, depending on the health, uh, to let your body cool down and calm down. But I've talked to a, a few of the Royals myself, and they got right back into their training mode right when they got home because they they missed that extra month of training. Yeah, Alex told me he did too, but he said you have to remember I had two months off and I've never had that where I was able to rest and he said, Steve, at the end of the season, I was very fresh when we were in the playoffs in the World Series. Yep, so he, you know, it's, everybody's different, but they knew what was ahead and, and you know, at the Fan Fest this year, at Bartle Hall, I got to see some of those guys, and I asked them, you know, how was your off season? It was a short one, and I expected them to say, "Wow, you know, we can't, I can't believe it's already here, and it went so fast." No, no, no. They, the, the, the response I got from several of them were, "We can't wait to do it again. We want another short off season." So that, 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 told, that, that told me they had the right mindset. And of course. As we see Mickey Calloway come out to visit with Salazar, who's thrown a lot of pitches after walking Alex Gordon. Gordon hit that game-tying home run in the ninth inning of Game 1 of the World Series. That was oh. incredible, and I thought Kauffman Stadium was going to explode. That might be the biggest home run of Alex's career. And it, it that's it's one of those home runs, Fizz, that you remember where you were when he hit it. We were sitting outside on the setup on the stage, for Fox getting ready to do our post game, and I remember sitting there and I'm thinking, oh man, this is this could this could 
you know, be a, a long night. And he hit that ball, and I screamed to all the security <laughs> guards that were out there and all anybody that was outside of the stadium. I told them what happened, and they jumped up. And, and that was really that, that put a, a huge damper on the Mets and their closer, who had been really good. Hadn't given up a, a run in like three months. I'm so glad he's back with us. I mean, I did a couple of college basketball games at Nebraska and Lincoln, which is Alex's hometown, and I can't tell you how many Royals fans came up to me and said, hey, are we going to get Gordon? I said, well, I know he wants to play for us, and we want him, so <laughs> it could work out. That held everybody in suspense <laughs> for, for two months after the season, maybe three. Uh, it was long, and but Alex, you know, he just... Did what you do when you're a free agent. Just kind of wait around. It'll all work out. And it did. Ooh. Salmi with a line drive base hit to right field. They're going to have to hold Morales so the Royals will have him loaded with one out. That's two opposite field singles by Salvi. Looking good. Staying short with his swing. And Rex, to finish the thought on Alex Gordon, there is a trust throughout the entire organization. And Alex said it best when he re-signed. He said, remember, Dayton Moore is first my friend, our general manager. And Dayton called Alex directly, and uh, obviously they got the deal done. But that's what friends do. And I think that's why you talk about the Royals' culture, the great chemistry in the clubhouse, the work ethic, the passion. The, the friendship they have for each other. And you and I see it every day. Yes, but it's very rare in this business. You don't hear of players talking about their, their the higher brass friends, using that term friends. It's a business. You go out and you play, you give them the, your best, but this is a totally different organization than many others. Mm -hmm. It is a, a classy, a respectful, they, they treat their people the way they want to be treated themselves becoming a, a model franchise with their talent that they that they assemble their scouting has been tremendous um, the, their loyalty and you know fortunately with these wins these back-to-back -back World Series the teams you know probably in the you know in the, in the plus side as far as the financial aspect of it and so they're gonna be able to do more and hopefully resign some of these star guys but Alex is is a royal and when you consider the fact that when he walks into the Royals clubhouse, he immediately commands respect. And had he signed with another team, he would have to prove himself all over again. Now, I talked to him at the Fan Fest. He said he was not going to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he just waited. He waited it out. Yeah, if apparently he kept on asking his agent, well, have the Royals called? <laughs> Orlando takes it low. Salazar trying for that strikeout. Has Paulo down one ball, two strikes. That was a good take there. It's important for Paulo to be able to become the run producer they believe he can as an everyday player in right field. That's two pretty good takes there. Mm -hmm. So even the count of two balls and two strikes, and you know that Salazar does not want to go three and two. He's labored the last two innings and allowed just one run. The Royals left the bases loaded in the second. It went right over the bag. I know. I was watching that third base umpire, Anthony Johnson, but he immediately ruled it foul. Paulo last year, after nine years in the minor leagues, five triples in his first major league game. You called him Paulo Triple O. <laughs> <laughs> that was special. And how about the walk-off grand slam against the Rays? I'll always remember that. His first three hits were all triples. I think that's the first time it's ever been done. 
And I remember Ned Yost saying, well, all we needed was a sacrifice fly, and I knew he had it deep enough, and then the ball just kept on going. Time to put some runs up here. Three and two. He's had some excellent swings on Salazar's fastballs, and we'll see if Salazar challenges him. He didn't challenge Decker in a, in a very similar situation last inning. And he walks Orlando, and that will drive in a run. This was after Salazar had Paulo down 0-2. But, Rex, as you indicated, those first two pitches after he was down 0-2 that he He's, took, he spit on him. That was the at-bat. It was beautiful. That's a nice plate appearance there by Paulo. He earned that RBI. And now we'll see Raymond Fuentes. He had a base hit his last time up. After the walk, be ready for that first pitch fastball. Bases loaded. And he whacks it to right field. Another hit for Fuentes. In comes Gordon right behind Salvador Perez. He will score. Here comes Orlando. They've got no chance to get him. And Fuentes with three RBIs on a rip to right. Now, well, Marlon Bird had a hard time as hard as that ball was hit out in right field. He kind of clanked it around, bobbled it some, and I don't know if Fuentes will get credit for all three of those RBIs, but Salazar didn't get much help defensively. Watch this. He overran it. <laughs> he over-pursued it down the line, and it got twisted up there, and that allowed Paulo Orlando to come all the way around from first base. But here come the Royals. Frenzy style hit. Five to three, Kansas City. We're still in the third. to you by Shelter Insurance for your home, auto, and life. Visit your local agent or find us on the web at shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. By Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Well, the Royals knocking out Danny Salazar and Raymond Fuentes continues with his impressive spring. And this was an opportunity he was looking for, HUD, with Gerard Dyson going down with the oblique injury. Yeah, you know, always ready for a job, Fizz. But look, you never want it by, by the, the guy ahead of you getting hurt. But you can't control that. You just go out and do the best you can. You, you always want your teammates to stay healthy. But it just doesn't always happen. You're ready. Stay ready. Here is Cody Decker hammering one to center field. This will deep enough to get Fuentes in so Decker with a solid at bat a sacrifice fly Raymond scores and the Royals are up six to three beautiful job by Decker that's nice again realizing that Austin Adams coming in most likely is going to go with that fastball so he's ready to hit Salazar roughed up in his last start and roughed up again today Oh, kind of got in on his hands. I tell you, the, the power of Decker 
is shown right there. That ball jammed him. The ball was about, you know, it was off the barrel. It was inside on his hands. And he hit it almost 400 feet. Now Christian Cologne facing Austin Adams, who's expected to be part of their bullpen this year. He appeared in 28 games for Cleveland after throwing in 13 for Columbus. Cleveland got him in the 2009 draft, fifth round out of Faulkner University in Montgomery, Alabama. You know, that big hit that Cologne got in the World Series, the go ahead, game winning stroke, it, it's now referred to as the hit. <laughs> Not that hit. Remember that hit I got? No, no. Remember the hit? We sure do. Yeah, that's it. Ned does. And I'll never forget after they planted their flag in the Mets ballpark there, Ned running away from Salvi. As Salvi was coming with the Gatorade. He was coming, and Ned was running away from him. And then finally he stopped and goes, what the heck, we're world champions. And he ran to Salvi, <laughs> took his hat off and said, come on, dump it all on me, buddy. Well, here's Cologne, a very good September, and he's a guy who likely will see more playing time this year. He's had a solid spring playing at second base, shortstop, a little bit at third base. It's that one to left center field. Naquin says he has it. He does. The Royals get a home run by Moustakis. And then a single, a couple of RBIs, and Air scored another. And the Royals are now in front 6-3 to three over Cleveland. Frenzy-style hit like you like it. How fast is it? There's one gentleman who would love the way that Raymond Fuentes is playing this spring training, and our thoughts and prayers are with the Garagiola family as Joe passed away today at the age of 90. He's survived by his wife, Audrey, three children, eight grandchildren. And this is a guy who went beyond baseball. I mean, he hosted the Today Show, the Tonight Show. But yet, HUD, he is only the second most famous catcher off Elizabeth Street in St. Louis. <laughs> the most famous catcher, of course, is Joe's dear friend, Yogi Berra. He was one of my heroes as a broadcaster, Joe. And we're just sorry to see him pass, his, his passing. But, you know, gosh, he did so much. He not only was a, was a great player, but... He was a tremendous broadcaster. Had a great sense of humor. A bright light. Yes, when when Jack Buck and Harry Carey and him were in that that booth for for Cardinals, uh, I, I, you know, I was I was a little too young for that. But I've I've heard fans say that that was very entertaining and a lot of fun. But I, I liked his sense of humor. Always laughing. Always have, having a joke. You know, to keep you loose. I'm sorry to see him go. Well, we were all blessed to have him for nine decades on this planet. And now we will see Francisco Lindor, who 
started the trouble for Chris Medlin back in the first inning by launching his first home run of the spring deep to right field but now Chris has a three run lead the Royals dropped a six spot on the tribe well this is one of the great things that the starting pitcher said about the team last year was that just somehow keep us in the game the offense will come back for you and we've got that great bullpen and now it's Mid Medlin's job to hold the lead. Moose will sprint towards it. But it'll be beyond his reach. It's kind of rare. Well, I was just here yesterday, but I've heard that crowds have been great, but there's a few empty seats. And if you'll take a look there, that netting, you see how that, that wire goes from the top of the backstop all the way across the dugout. Now, this is what we're going to see in Major League Baseball as they've made adjustments. Um, you know, the commissioner asked the teams to do something, and it was up to the, their team to do it as they see fit for their ballpark. But I can tell you, I noticed it right away coming here to Goodyear, and it, it's a, just a breath of fresh air. It's a sigh of relief. For those people sitting over that dugout, I always worried about that ball skipping off the top of that dugout and clipping somebody that's on their iPhone or something. But this protects them. If, if you want to sit in that seat behind the dugout, go ahead. You can do anything and know that your face is protected, and especially your family. So great thing Major League Baseball did. And the Royals very proud that they're part of that, and they will have the netting all the way to the end of the dugout this year. Great idea. I'll tell you what, it's not going to take away from the in intimacy of the game. Uh, in my opinion, I've never had a chance to sit down there. I, I never could afford a seat down there. But Biz, uh, this is a great thing to protect our, our wonderful fans. And this is a great battle between... Chris Medlin and Francisco Lindor. He has fouled off several tough pitches on his hands. And then there's a chopper to second base. Cologne will take care of Lindor, and there's one man out. And you know, Medlin, he knows he's going to face the tribe, you know, three or four times this season, and he, he may not show them some pitches that he'll show him when the regular season comes like he's just giving Lindor fastballs there and that's why Volquez is pitching a minor league game today that's one of the reasons. Indians don't need to see him. yeah nah, Volque Jordano will pitch a minor league game tomorrow yeah, even though the Royals play the Milwaukee Brewers they won't face them this year uh, you know it's, it's another great option in spring training when you have all these teams and all these games that can be played in the minor league complex and it's less stressful situation really no crowd no TV they just go out just a regular game you know you play the pitch against the minor leaguers Denny Matthews was telling me when the Royals started in 1969 and they were playing in Florida spring training he said they played 22 games and now we're playing 36 we're having split squad games trying to get everybody some work Ten days will be home at the K, hosting the New York Mets. In there, good pitch. One and two. You know, we had a promotion earlier in this game talking about fans going on the road. I mean, what a good time. Last season and, and even in 14 was so great to go in opposing ballparks and see Royal Blue and the fans with the Let's Go Royals chance. I think that's going to stay in the park. Orlando fighting the sun and he lost the baseball. He never was able to really pick it up and Kipnis going to third will make it safely. But the one thing I've noticed down here if you can see the sun in the outfielder or infielders sunglasses he's got trouble. Oh believe it. You got trouble when you wake up in the morning and the sun's out here because you know that it's it's always going to be a problem here. There's not usually a lot of cloud cover here, but you can see he's trying to use that glove. And there's the sun, like you said, reflecting off his glasses. And he did a, a good job just to get a glove on it. It is very difficult, number one, just to track a ball now, on your running back like that towards the towards the back of the fence there and then to keep that focus and then you got to look and battle the sun and try to find that little 
bitty pill. It looks like a like a little small round pill, and, and, and it's very difficult to glove those. And they're ruling it a base hit, a triple for Kipnis. So he has a home run and a triple, and Mike Napoli now the batter. Royals playing their infield back. And there's a base hit by Napoli to right field that will score Kipnis. And it's a 6-4 to four ball game. That's a good swing by Napoli. Napoli and Morales used to be teammates with the Los Angeles Angels. Curveball kind of stayed up out over the middle of the plate. Napoli, good little short, compact stroke, just trying to pick up the RBI. So Will Venable, who walked his first time up, will, will step to the plate. Strike one. Venable, a good bunter. Now with two strikes. Moustakis will back up, but Mike was right on the edge of the infield grass. He was thinking about pulling the trigger. A little curve on the outside part of the plate. Medlin will work that change up in there, see if he can put him in the lane. Roll him up. You've all heard the story of Chris Medlin battling back from his second Tommy John surgery. And after the Royals rehabbed him almost the entire month of June, he returned to Major League Baseball for the first time since 2013. Joining Kansas City after the All-Star break. I remember that first game. He was really impressive. July 20th, tossing three and a third innings versus Pittsburgh. His first outing in 22 months. Ooh. Two balls, two strikes. That's a little setup pitch there. Try to come in on him with a fastball or maybe set up something else. The previous, the, the next pitch there. Maybe a little off speed pitch down. Get Venable to hit it right at Cologne. Steady goes off speed and gets a swing and a miss. And Venable strikes out, so there's two out now. Napoli holding at first base. Yep, fastball in high and tight sets up that changeup. Beauty down low. That's exactly where Medlin lives during the season, you hope, right down there. He doesn't hit it, he hits it on the ground. Now the batter Marlon Bird, who struck out swinging to end the first. Chris has given up two in the first, one in the second, and one so far in the third. Ben picking up here at Goodyear Ballpark. It's roaring out towards right field. Good 10, 15 miles an hour. On his hands, popped into shallow right, and that ball will drop. So Bird gets his third base hit of the year in seven at-bats. The batter will be Juan Uribe. I wonder how much longer Ned Yost and Dave Island will send Chris Medlin they got Chris Young out of the game after four and a third last night, having thrown 78 pitches. And Chris, after the ball game, tongue in cheek, turned to Ned Yost and said, I don't know why he got me out of there. Didn't he know I have a no-hitter going? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we, we watched him uh, on TV, and he was shaking his head as Ned in the dugout came walking over to him. And then we got an interview with him, and I said, man, you Ned was happy with your outing, and it seemed like you weren't too happy with it. You know, I think Chris Young is a little bit of a perfectionist. Yes. You know, he, he, he was.
wasn't happy with his three walks, but look, no runs, no hits. It's a pretty good outing. Of yeah. course, of course uh, uh, um, Alexander gave up a run, one of his runs. But Young did. Tries to tease a rebay away, and it does miss. One ball, one strike. But the thing I like about Chris Young, there were times, HUD, where he was really struggling with his fastball command. And then you could see him gathering himself. He would make the adjustment and then get back in the count and get the guy out. Rebe trying to hit it completely out of the ballpark into I-10. Oh, he never gets cheated. No. He gets his money's worth when he swings that bat. Nicely done. Todd at the outside corner, off speed, struck him out. That's five strikeouts for Medlin through three innings. lead over the Cleveland Indians as we head to the fourth inning of play and we've got a new pitcher in Austin Adams who took over for Danny Salazar and Adams we told you one of those guys who is competing for a spot in the Cleveland bullpen this year like his stuff good lively fastball in the mid 90s he will face Alcides Escobar Eski today, 0 for 2. He's popped up and grounded out. Salazar breezed through the Royals in the first inning and then completely fell apart. Loaded the bases in the second, got out of it. Loaded the bases in the third, did not get out of it. And the Royals pounded Danny for six runs. He chased a bad pitch away from him and now finds himself down in the count. Oh, and two. Got the outside corner, and he is 0 for 3, and now 5 for 35 in spring training. But he's one of those guys who, once the bell rings, Escobar is ready. 
It happened last you year know, because I thought his last week of spring training last season was awful. And as soon as the opening day, bam, Escobar took off and so did the Royals. You know, I, I always believed that there was no such thing as I'll be ready when the bell rings. But, you know, for Escobar, that's true. <laughs> I mean, he went through a period last year, I believe it was in September, uh, where he didn't do anything. That's when Ned banished him out of the number one hole and put him down in that nine hole. And, and talking with Rusty Coons, Rusty says, you know what, he's just bored. That's all it is. He, he's, <laughs> he's bored in that nine hole. He's he, such a great ass. Yeah, you put him in that one hole and then look, watch out. When, when the postseason came, so did Esky. He just come on big time. You know, he has great instincts. Some of the best baseball instincts I've been around. There's a ground ball to the second baseman. Kipnis will throw out Mike. And there's two out. That will take us to Kendris Morales. And Kendra's coming off a fantastic season last year where he hit 290 with 22 home runs and 106 RBIs. And he is our Academy Sports and Leaderboard. He was the American League's most outstanding designated hitter. And as Eric Hosmer has said many times, when I have Kane hitting in front of me and Kendris Morales behind me, I should have a good year. But I'm sure Kendris very proud of what took place last night. A crowd of 55,000 watched a game in Cuba as Tampa Bay beat Cuba 4-1. to one. But what we saw was tremendous love for the game and another example of how baseball and sport wrecks can, can bring cultures and communities together governments too yep and talking with morales he said that ballpark right there was his home ballpark yep so he loved hitting there so it was good he, he he had a big smile on his face talking about it chris archer wanted president obama to sign his club which he did but obama did say that that's the power of baseball. It can change attitudes sometimes in ways a politician can never change them. And that's what I love about sports. I always hated it when they talked about canceling the Olympics because governments couldn't get along. And I go, let's still play. It's the one thing we might be able to communicate with. Adams to Kendry. And it is hit back to Adams, and he has a very comfortable fourth inning. The Royals still hold the lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning in Goodyear, 6-4. to four. Hey, Royals fans. The cactus in the desert, but it is special, and we invite you to come down next year for Cactus League play. 
the Royals in Surprise Arizona. They welcome you. We've had a lot of great crowds this year and after back to back World Series and obviously a world championship. A lot of interest for Royals baseball and some good things going on this week hut with the Royals playing and the Kansas Jayhawks continuing their bid for a national championship. Why not go ahead. Bill Self against a former Jayhawk and Mark Turgeon in Maryland. It's be a fun. great matchup. Yeah, that comes after the Oklahoma game. Here is Medlin, and he gets a swing and a miss. Tyler Naquin with a very impressive spring thus far. He's hitting over 400. Hit that long home run his first time up. But he could be their opening day center fielder. And he hits that one far and deep. Same place. Wow. Chris Medlin has allowed four home runs in four innings. Now that's out here and it's out in Cleveland too. Another fastball right down the middle of Medlin. He knows. His location with the fastball, just not where he wants it. Not as fine today. He's getting close to his limit. He's already at 71 pitches. When he's on, he's usually 12, 13 pitches per inning. Getting ahead, finishing guys off, but... This is the worst command we've seen him have this spring with his fastball yeah. change up and curveball look pretty good mm -hmm. and you notice they're not hitting that one those two pitches they're only hitting that fastball but you know I remember facing Hall of Famer John Smoltz in spring training we shared the complex with them and so we had a lot of games with them Expos Braves and he would just throw nothing but fastballs and he didn't care and you hit him and he goes hey nice swing and then when the season came <laughs> never saw a fastball down the middle it was on the black on the corner and down and here come the second well, what was pitches. he working on then well he said arm strength he's, he's going to get his arm strength up make sure right. he, yeah he did he could care less about those numbers but i did because i was trying to make the team Ooh. Ooh, how about that? That's a paint. Perez did not like the call, but that's six strikeouts now for Chris Medlin. Yeah, now there's some location on that pitch. Right there on the corner. And Perez, you got to go. And uh, Chris Medlin will have to go because Ned Yost, knowing that Chris is at his limit, the Royals still have the lead, but by just one run after he allowed a home run to Tyler Naquin. We'll be right back. This is a big.
didn't have as good command, particularly with that fastball. Gave up four home runs, and the Royals going now with Brian Dunsing, who for many years was a member of the Minnesota Twins organization. And former Nebraska Cornhusker played college baseball with Alex Gordon. He has a 4-2-5 ERA last year. And Dunsing, what they tried to do, Try to tighten up that slider. It got a little loopy last year, and that's why he had the ERA over four. His best year with the Twins was 2010 when he went 10 and 3 with a 2.62 ERA. Yep, he likes to cut that fastball in. He's got a big slow curve, good changeup. He'll go 90 to 93. Santana jumps on his first pitch and hammers it out of play. Also scheduled to go today, Wade Davis, Luke Hochaver, Chin Ming Wong, Peter Moylan, and David Huff. The Royals, right before Dunsing through the pitch, they had their second baseman, Cologne, move from the second base side over to the shortstop side of second base, and Escobar way over, and so is Mike Mustakis, almost playing no doubles. On that third base line. Now a 2 1 count. Uh, Brian, a veteran, 33 years of age, still lives in Omaha. This is his seventh big league season. Carlos always sees a lot of pitches. Walked 108 times last year. Right where Cologne is playing. That is good defensive placement. That's Mike Gershley. Yeah, you know, you talk about Mike Gershley and the defensive replacement. You know, it's hard enough to coach third base. Okay, that's, a, that's a very tough position to be able to use that judgment and win the sit runners and win not to. But that Gershley has a whole other game, a whole other set of work in the, inside that dugout. When he goes in off of that, when, when the team's on offense and he goes in there, he's got all these spray charts and all these things he's got to, you know, make sure that defense. So he, he works hard as, as well as all the coaches. There you go, Jersh. It is. He never gets a break. You know, earlier we were talking about Alcides Escobar's instincts, and Jershley was telling me there are times where I'll begin to move Eski, and he has already moved. He's he's moved, he's read the bat swing, and sure enough, a guy will hit the ball directly where Escobar, and he goes, "That's just a great feel for the game." Yep. Instincts is hard to teach. And as he said, growing up in Venezuela, I mean, he said, my family grew up with baseball or softball. And that as an infant, when I was walking, my mom would put me in the outfield where she was an outfielder. And I just walk around and there's Escobar. How about that? <laughs> Talk about him. And he does that. That's why he's like he... a ballerina. Where's the gold, Fizz? Yeah, a little out front on that, that door. Look at Esky, he got that hop, hopped up on it. Beauty. Meet the new...
Cleveland's new pitcher will be Kyle Crockett. He is a former fourth round pick in 2013 out of the University of Virginia, which has become a very good baseball school. With Cleveland last year, left handers hit just 256 overall. He threw in 31 games for the tribe and had a 408 ERA. Started the year at Triple A Columbus. And they've got a lot of lefties. Crockett's got a, a fastball 88 to 93. Slider and a change. A lot of lefties bidding for a couple of spots in that bullpen. Crockett probably has the edge. He will face Alex Gordon, then Salvador Perez, then Paulo Orlando. And Cleveland will play three infielders on the right side. Gordon takes strike one. Crockett at Virginia went 12 and 3 with 12 saves in a 198 ERA in his career. That's pretty good uh, ERA against that aluminum bat. Yeah, no, I, I, I like him. I, I liked him last year. He, he comes in, you know, he's a, he, he, he's got some deception to his delivery, but he's, you know, he's got good command. He's got a little, little sidearm action. He kind of flings it in there, you know. He's got some deception. It's kind of hard to pick up. Cody Allen will be their closer. And they also have Zach McAllister and Brian Shaw. Manship and Adams in that mix. It's a good bullpen, not like Kansas City's. Grounder to the shortstop, Lindor. On the second base side of the bag. Throws out Alex. But Cleveland's strength is certainly their rotation, led by Corey Kluber, who two years ago won the Cy Young, and Danny Salazar is expected to be their number two, and the Royals jumped on Salazar for six runs in only three innings today. Carlos Carrasco, Trevor Bauer, Cody Anderson. There's a strike in the outside corner. I mean, everybody talks about the big three because they have the best stuff, the strikeout stuff. Foul back. Kluber, Carrasco, and Salazar, but they really like Cody Anderson, and their sixth starter, I'm guessing, would be Josh Tomlin. Where's Trevor Bauer? He's got to be in there somewhere. He, he's their five guy. Bauer. He's the kid out of UCLA who was a third overall pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Didn't work out there. Traded to Cleveland. See if Salvi can stay perfect today. He's already got a couple of base hits. One down the right field line. And the other to right center. The other playing him straight up. And he foul tips it into the glove for a strikeout for Crockett. And Hud, you won't see it that much in the box score tomorrow but I thought Paulo Orlando's at bat one out bases loaded down in the count 0 2 was a terrific at bat for a guy who in his minor league career didn't have that kind of plate discipline but Orlando showed it in his last plate appearance that comes with confidence it comes with getting playing time he's not the same guy he was last year last year he might have been a little more aggressive trying to impress you know and trying to Swing it some more pitches now. He knows he's got the job in right field, at least in his mind. So he's saying, All right. And sometimes you know, hitters have a tendency, tendency to play up to their level and to play up to the big, they're better in the big leagues. So they get some experience and confidence. And because the Royals have more acreage in their outfield than any other ballpark of the American League, you need fleet footed outfielders. Chopper Crockett will field it and throw out Paulo Orlando. There's a look at the Grand Canyon, the great wonders in the world.
6-5 lead. Here's our game summary. Medlin gave up seven hits, five earned runs, and four home runs, and two hit by Tyler Naquin, but it all was fastball command. That's it. If you watch where these pitches are located, those are all pitches that are saying, hit me, hit me, hit me. Right down the middle. And that's what hitters look for. And Medlin had a little bit of difficulty with finding too much in the middle there. And now, Chris Medlin giving up two home runs to Tyler Naquin. He's trying to nail down an outfield spot for the drive. Got a new pitcher, and he's one of the best in baseball, Wade Davis. But a silent assassin. Here is strike one. What a year. Eight and one. 17 for 18 and saves after taking over for Greg Holland. Money pitcher. Believe it. Great season. Not a good season. A great year. He anchored the world champion Royals. When Holland stepped out, he stepped in. Look at the postseason. Four you look at it, saves opportunities. Look at that ERA. Nil. Couldn't sniff him. Waiter, check please. <laughs> but what they wanted to do early in spring training is make sure he was brought along slowly because you look at Wade Davis and Kelvin Herrera, they've had a tremendous workload the last two years. There's Kipnis with a fly ball struck to left center. Paulo Orlando wants it and takes it for the first out. I say that because HUD last year he had 69 regular season appearances and eight more in the postseason. That's 77. He's had over like 160 appearances the last two years. Well, you know, he and Dave Ireland have a, an excellent communication between each other. They're able to, you know, Wade tells him how he's feeling all the time, every day. If he needs some rest, you know, he they give it to him. And with the depth in the bullpen and the, the talent they have there. But to keep him fresh most of the year. Hopefully all the year, the whole season. I remember two years ago when Wade was trying to be a starting pitcher. And that was the spring that Luke Hochaver went down. And Ned Yost called Wade in and said, we're going to have to change and put you in the bullpen. And Ned said, I'd like to give you two innings of work tomorrow. And, said, and Wade said, no, give me one. I want to be aggressive. I want to go all out for one inning. I don't want to try and pace myself. And Ned said, you got it. Yep. And, you know, you, you can't blame the Royals. Look at how big he is. He's a big, strong guy. And, and they needed some starting pitching. And they, you know, put him out there for a while. Just didn't have the same consistency. He's become one of the best closers in the game. Napoli got it on his hands. Good fastball. Down in the count, one ball, two strikes. But 77 appearances for Davis last year. Kelvin Herrera with 83 when you include regular season plus postseason. Herrera's had an excellent spring, really has been sharp. He and Joaquim Soria. Wade has made five scoreless appearances this spring, yielding just three hits, one walk, five strikeouts. In the air to center field. Again, Paulo struggling with that sun. Finds the baseball for out number two. And once again, you could see that re sun reflecting off his glasses. And he's talking with Raymond Fuentes about that. This is no fun. Well, it's an adventure, that's for sure. But once he takes that glove down, he pretty much tells you he's got it. 
Rex, you played both in Florida and Arizona spring training. What's the difference in the, the high sky, the sun? Florida, there's more wind. It's close to the water, so there's a lot of wind blowing, and that's really can, can be worse than the sun. And a lot of cloud cover, sun coming in and out. Arizona, more blue sky. Challenge for blue skies, the ball gets lost up in the blue. I mean, so both states, not easy, especially day games outdoors. But there are different elements there. The wind in Florida was unbelievable. It, it, it blew hard every day, especially on the, the places I trained, West Palm Beach, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, then Clearwater with the with the Phillies and and the St. Louis Cardinals trained on the on the water there and St. Pete, you know. So whenever you're near water, you're going to get wind. Now Will Venable, he is 0 for 1, walked his first time up in the first and then struck out in the third. But you know there was a lot of fun things to do. You know the first two three weeks in spring training, you're you're done by noon. Okay, so, so guys go golfing, some guys go fishing, and, and there's boats out there in Florida. I, I always felt sorry for the people who trained in Arizona until I got to Arizona. Then I said, oh, my gosh, this is the best. There's no, there's no road trips. Yeah, he went. And in, in, uh, in Florida, you got to stay overnight. Sometimes two nights. I mean, you know, you do that all summer. You don't want to do that in spring training. Your longest trip here is 45 minutes. It used to be two hours when they had two teams playing in Tucson, but they're all here in the Phoenix metro oh, area it's now. A beautiful thing. And the weather's more consistent. Venable works the walk from Davis. Now the batter will be Marlon Byrd, who struck out his first time up and singled the right field. He's popping one over the head of the second baseman, Christian Colon, perfectly past Colon and in front of Fuentes. Byrd last year, 19 home runs for the Reds and four with the Giants. Inside. Wade Davis, the way he chucks the base runner, very similar to James Shields, the way he'll curl over like that. That was taught to him by Dick Bosman with the Rays. Quick feet, nice throw over. Not like Medlin. Medlin's got a good move, too. Runner goes. Oh. Salvi from his knees throws the runner out. <laughs> that was a beauty. I mean, that ball was barely in the glove of Salvi by the time he turned it around. Look at this. This is why he wears the gold.
get to the ballpark early to check out the TV truck's new toys, and he was working with our drones today, and look what happened. You're a mess. You drove that right into the tree. Fizz, that takes skills to do that, man. It was tough. That thing was a lot faster than I thought it was. We were getting pictures of those on the berm, and they're enjoying the sunshine of Arizona. The Royals with a 6-5 lead. Raymond Fuentes will lead things off. A whole host of changes for the Cleveland Indians defensively, but right now it's Fuentes for KC, and Cody Kyle Crockett stays in the game. Cody Decker will be next. Fuentes shows bunt. Rebe still in at third, and he was on the edge of the grass. Fuentes today, two for two, now batting over 400 this spring with a couple of home runs and nine RBIs, two in his last at bat. Pops one towards left, but coming on is the left fielder and making the catch. Calling all Mizzou and SLU fans, make sure you make it out to Kauffman Stadium on Tuesday, March 29th to watch the Missouri Tigers and St. Louis Billikens battle it out under the big league lights. Game time is 6.30 with youth tickets starting at just $5 and adult tickets starting at just $10. Parking is free. For tickets and information, go to royals.com slash college baseball. So Fuentes out for the first time. And here is Decker. Just does graze that outside corner. Decker sharply to third, a rebase throw in time and two out. So Crockett will face Christian Colon, who's 0 for 2, and Terry Francona coming out. Looks like he'll want a right-hander to face Christian, as Crockett has done his job. And we'll see a new pitcher when we come back with the Royals leading Cleveland 6-5. You're here to buy a car. got a few changes for you for the Cleveland Indians. They've got a new shortstop in Eric Gonzalez, a new second baseman in Michael Martinez, a new left fielder in Joey Butler, and the new pitcher is Jeff Manship, who has been around 31 years old out of San Antonio, Texas. He's been with Arizona, the Twins, Colorado, the Phillies, and now the Indians. And he is facing Christian Colon, who is 0 for 2. Manship delivers perfectly on the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Last year with Cleveland, really pitched well. 
had an 092 ERA in 32 games. Yeah, you know, he's beautifully located and uh, he strikes out Christian. Good singer. Whit Merrifield now taking over at third base for Mike Moustakis. Clint Barmas will be in short. Raul Mondesi at second. Frank Schwindel at first in the outfield. Left to right. Gore, Fuentes, and Logan Moon. And Luke Hochaver will be the new Royal pitcher here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Luke last year, 49 games, had nine in the postseason, did not allow a run, and won the final game of the World Series. And I think everybody in Kansas City was so proud and happy for Luke Hochaver because he missed all of 2014 with the elbow surgery, and he said it was his greatest year in baseball, of course, until 2015. Yeah. But he said to be part of getting to the World Series and seeing all my teammates there, and he said, I just wanted to be there piling on at the very end. Yeah. Just a great teammate. He sure is, but he's got a, uh, he adds a lot, and that's two of the last pitches we've seen. Davis and Hochaver. Postseason, not a blemish. Didn't give up a run. Fantastic. He's made, Rex, he's made six scoreless appearances this spring, allowing just three hits, three walks, and one hit batter in six innings. And, you know, being a, a full year removed from that surgery, Hoach is more confident. You remember last year they they had to just ease him in. But I was talking with Dave Island, he said that Hoach Haver is a big, big part of their back end. That I was there. visiting with his dad at camp the other day, and his dad, Brian, said Hoach never wanted to leave. And he said one reason why was the same word that we always come back to trust he said Luke Hochaver has an excellent relationship with Dayton Moore and uh, two years ago when he was a free agent he asked the same question that Alex Gordon was asking well have the Royals called he, he didn't want to go anywhere else and when Dayton texted his agent the agent texted Hoach Brian his dad told me he and Luke were together at the time, and, and Luke just immediately texted him back, take it, that's where I want to be. Beautiful pitch by Luke. Man, he's got a nasty breaking ball and a super cut fastball. And that was what that was. Cutter. Looks good in the last second. That thing moves away, and it down, downward action to it. Very tough for a hitter. You know, it's really interesting, Rex, and I know we've talked about it a lot this spring, but... Ned Yost said he has never had 25 guys who trust each other like these guys do. Yeah, they're not teammates, Fizz. They're brothers. Yep. That's exactly what they are. They, they really have a, a deep affection for one another. And it shows. And, and that's called team chemistry. And people want to know what that is. Well, it's how they get along and, and how they 
can gel on the field to win games. Here is Juan Arebe. He's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Chaver misses on the inside corner. So the Royals once again will be rather formidable with that bullpen anchored by Davis and then Hochaver Herrera Joaquin Soria back with the ball club Duffy. There is a looping line drive to left field for a hit. Yeah, Danny looked good last night and of course Dylan G could make that bullpen. Jimmy Wong and David Huff, Brian Dunsing, Yella Monte, perhaps battling for that final spot. They're deep. Dave Island thinks that their rotation's better, their bullpen's better because it's deeper. It's just good reports all the way around. Yeah, we'll miss the toughness, the competitiveness of Craig Holland. He is gone for the year because of the elbow injury. Yeah, they'll miss him for sure, but you know, he, he'll be back. And hopefully in the Royals uniform. Mm -hmm. There's Chinman Wong, who is warming up in the Kansas City pen, and he's been impressive this year. I remember watching the first game that he pitched in spring training and looking up at the radar gun going, hey, 94 for Chinman Wong? Wow. He's back. Naquin has been up twice and hit two home runs to the same spot deep right center field about 420 foot blasts. Is that a friend of yours? Sure. He's a good year guy. Mr. Baseball. He's got a good seat. His nickname is down in front. Exactly. Well, Naquin's three for three. And all three of them will be extra base hits as he's able to get a rebate of third. And Naquin now with two home runs and a double. Okay, Midland. That tough time with his location. Naquin took him deep. And in the same spot in the fourth inning. Almost identical pitches. That one was elevated on a tee even a little better for him. Pretty impressive. It's the kind of spring you want to have when you're looking to make a team. He could be sharing that center field spot with Rajay Davis. Roberto Perez is the batter. And it's knocked up the middle for a hit. And that will give Cleveland the lead as Naquin will score the go-ahead run. So three straight hits off Hochaver by Uribe, Naquin, and Perez. Yeah, right out over the middle of the plate. Perez did a nice job of staying with it up the middle. Back, back. Cleveland will be tough offensively, especially with Brantley back in there. And all reports is good for him. I mean, I know that there was some reports before spring training that he would miss the first month or two of the season, but that's not what the Cleveland Indians camp is saying. He is their number three hitter. Very important guy, but his first game was last Saturday. He almost homered on the first pitch. And in his third at bat, he did homer. Cleveland went 81 and 80 last year, finished in third place, but it was their third straight winning season. The one area that I thought they needed to improve was on offense. They were 18th in the major leagues and run scored with 669, 55 fewer than Kansas City. And Rex, all of their improvements were with veterans, and, and I'm talking about Rebe 37, Marlon Bird 38, Mike Napoli 34. As
as Hochaber gets the strike out of Santana. at the plate. He came over from the Rays organization. Joey, 30 years old, out of the state of Mississippi, at 276 for the Rays last year with eight home runs. Time there. Butler just backed out of the plate. Hoach stopped. Yeah, no, if Hoach shows a strike there, it's a strike. Easy strike. How about the play yesterday early in that game, Rex, when Alex Wood, I think it was a bird that he saw, which caused him to completely hold on to the baseball. And balk, and that put runners on from that were on first and second base to second and third, took away the double play. And the Royals, who have a history of if you make a mistake, they jump all over it. They did, and they scored two runs when they could have been out of the inning with no run scoring. Yeah, you saying that reminds me of that Houston game. Correa, the shortstop, let that ball bounce over his glove. That would have ended the inning and possibly ended the season for the Royals. Instead, Came back and won. Took on the Blue Jays. The rest is history. One of the greatest comebacks I've ever seen. Oh, beautiful thing. MLB.TV Premium, everything you have come to expect and more, plus a new low price for 2016. Watch spring training games and every out-of-market regular season game for all 30 teams live in HD at home, in the office, or on the go. MLB.TV Premium includes a free at-bat premium subscription. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Well, Jeff Manship stays in the game after pitching very well to strike out Christian Cologne. And that was the final out of the sixth inning now facing Clint Barmas who hammers went down the line but foul so he'll head back to the plate. Yeah Barmas. He 
he is right at 11 years of Major League service time. He's had a nice career. Rockies, Astros, Pittsburgh Pirates, Padres last year. Good for him. And of course, when you come to a team and you're a non roster guy, but you have that, that kind of service time, you're going to get a good number. You got number 12. <laughs> That's the respect factor. Oh, Clint tried to hold up, but. It did foul tip off the end of his bat. That is a strikeout. Jesus Aguilar takes over at first base for Carlos Santana and Giovanni Soto. Giovanni Urshela, excuse me, will come into the game and play third base. Giovanni finished the year last year at third for. The tribe, but they picked up Juan Uribe, so Urshela may get more time down in the minor leagues. And uh, Jose Ramirez will be the guy who likely will move all around the diamond, back everybody up. Here's Whit Merrifield for the first time. Got some pretty good stuff. Yep, he does. There's, Cleveland has a, a, a whole stable of good arms. You know, looking at Merrifield's stats last year from Omaha, pretty impressive numbers: 544 at bats, 32 steals. That's what has also been in his favor. Good base runner, smart base runner. But to have a guy with that kind of versatility, very important. And Rex, I'm sure he was disappointed when the Royals didn't protect him in the 40 man and he wasn't selected in the Rule 5 draft. Yep. There's a whole bucket full of disappointments when you're a, a young player. Believe me, you're facing really tough odds to try to become a big league player, let alone an everyday guy. And uh, you just have to have that ability to. To wash all that away and stay positive and believe you're going to make a team sometime. Manship, meantime, has faced three and struck them all out. He's got that good sinker, but also an excellent breaking ball that gives the illusion that's going to be a strike and then fades right out of the zone. Now, Frank Schwendel, this is a guy who homered. Earlier this week for the Royals. Good power. He's hit as many as 20 home runs in a minor league season in the past. Schwindel down that left field line, and that is a fair ball. And Frank will. Race to second base, stay there with the double. Nice touch. This change up. Stay down over the middle of the plate. He's able to keep his hands back and just talk it fair. I mean, on the chalk. Good for him. So the tying run in scoring position, Royals trailing Cleveland 7 to 6. When we started the day, the starters were Chris Medlin for Kansas City and Danny Salazar for Cleveland. Both had rough outings. Medlin gave up four home runs. Salazar gave up six runs in the third inning alone. Now Terrence Gore, who's two for 13 this spring. The thing that is so surprising, HUD, he has attempted three steals, has been caught all three times. Really? Yeah. Huh. Last time was on a pitch out. 
and they barely got him. But and we're talking about one of the fastest men in the game. Yeah, and you know he hasn't been able to get his career going defensively or offensively in the majors, but he's a polished base stealer, that's for sure. The Royals has a team with only 11 stolen bases this spring. But more teams are prepared for the Royals. Last season, their stolen bases were down. They were, they still had 104. And Gore will walk the ball, gets away. And there goes the runner, the third rather late. And Schwindel is going to be thrown out. Oh, man. He should have gone immediately, but he hesitated and then took off, and the hesitation cost KC. Oops. What happens? Grand Canyon State, the Royals and Cactus League play with the Cleveland Indians. Trail the Tribe 7 to 6. Medlin gave up five earned runs and three in the third. Naquin has been the destroyer for Cleveland with three extra base hits, two of them home runs. And now Chin Ming Wong will come on to throw to Tony Cruz, who's the new catcher. So we've got a new battery. Wong, the veteran at the age of 36, has made five appearances this spring, including a start. Last weekend at Texas, ground ball up the middle. Barmas has it go through his legs. So Michael Martinez is on, but we'll see a lot of that with Wong in the mound, Hud, because he has that excellent sinking fastball. Sure does, but what's impressing Dave Island and Ned Yost is his velocity, 93 to 95 of that sinking fastball. In the battle in the bullpen, Brian Dunsing pitting for a spot. Dylan G probably already has nailed one down. And Jinmin Wong, along with John Lannon, those are the veterans. Royal infielders have, be, have to be ready for that double play. Wong, when he was at his best back in 2006 and 2005, each year winning 19 games for the New York Yankees and in 2006 he was the runner-up to Cy Young and Minnesota's Johan Santana tied Santana for the most wins in the major leagues with 19 that year yeah to go along with that sinker he's got a good slider change and a curve they were sending Martinez and on the hit and run Ramirez fouls it out of play 
Runner does not go. The ball chopped to second base. Should be two. Barmas completes the double play. 4-6-3. Very nice. That's what you get with a good hard sinker. And believe me, with that defense that the, that the Royals are going to throw out there in the regular season, if Wong makes the team, he'll be a great addition. Nice turn there by Barmas. And, you know, the fact that Honestly, started it out there with a nice little little feed to him, but you know the fact that Wong can pitch out of the pin, Wong, or he can start. I mean, uh, you got with his stuff and how he's with his experience. You know, with eight years in the majors and his stuff and his smarts. It'd be tough for him not to make that team. He is looking to return to the big leagues for the first time since the 2013 season when he made six starts for Toronto, but has had so many injuries. Yeah, the, sh the shoulder gave out on him, but he's found himself another ground ball. I'm telling you what, he's got super sync. Nice job. <laughs> Telecast. We'll see Billy Butler, former Royal, and the Oakland A's Saturday, 3 o'clock Central Time. The Royals just 10 days from opening day against the New York Mets. Oakland are now rebuilding after they contended for the World Championship a couple of seasons back, but the Royals knocked them out and they beat them in the wild card game. Cody Allen takes over for the Cleveland Indians. He'll be their closer this year, and Allen last year with 34 saves. Yep, he goes hard fastball, low to mid-90s with a power curveball. It'll be Tony Cruz, then Logan Moon. Cruz takes strike one. Strike two. Today the Royals did grant the release of Ross Olander. Olendorf, a relief pitcher, is bidding to make the club, giving him an opportunity to hook on with somebody else. And they also sent five minor leaguers to 
camp or minor league camp. Who swings and misses and Allen gets a strikeout for the first out. They sent out Brian Flynn, Scott Alexander, Parker Morin, Dusty Coleman, and Orlando Caliste. Watch for that Flynn guy to make his mark this year and perhaps come to the big leagues. Yeah, you know, you miss a whole year. No, he's he needs to get some innings in and get build up that that in season arm strength. But he looked good last night. I, we'll see him again, I'm sure. Now Logan Moon, who hails from Blue Springs, Missouri. Was the Royals sixth round pick in the 2014 draft last year at Wilmington hit 254 strike so good for these guys to get in that bat in a big league spring training game I tell you does a lot for their confidence their family and friends back home wherever they're from they all see the box scores they're proud yeah, he went to Blue Springs South High School and then on to the University of Central Arkansas for three years before transferring to Missouri Southern. Out of play. Has not shown that much power yet. He's 6'2", 195, but two home runs and 226 at bats in 2014 with Burlington and then last year no home runs and only 16 extra base hits and 386 at bats game's tough indeed better believe it if it was easy you would have played it it would have to be really easy <laughs> for me to get on the diamond. I was not very good. That's what I prayed for, Hud. A foul ball. Yeah. Well. Hopefully. Please, Lord, let me just make hopefully contact. Hopefully, Moon will get more than that. Ah, oh, yeah. How about it? Good play, sir. And add a little extra excitement to your afternoon. I remember one of the great broadcasters and my mentor, Fred White, longtime broadcaster for the Royals. He was a pretty good player back in the day in high school. And Logan Moon will work the walk, but Dan Quisenberry would sometimes throw a fastball in the high 70s or the mid 80s. Fred once said, I'm sure I could hit you. Quiz said, let's go. So Fred stepped into the batter's box. Quiz threw him 20 pitches. Fred said, I fouled one off. <laughs> <laughs> it looks easy. I know. They make it look so easy. Fuentes back up there again. He is two for three. And goes ahead for the first pitch, fouls it off. He singled to center field, and his big hit was that single with the bases loaded that scored three runs. He got two RBIs, but... Because Marlon Byrd misplayed his ball on a smash to right field. All three runners were able to score. And Fuentes made it to third. There it was. Short, compact swing. All three runners scored. Moon goes. The pitch is swung on and hit in the hole. The shortstop grabs it, but no chance to get the speedy Fuentes, who comes up with his third hit of the day. That's doing your job. Yeah, you know what? He knew there was a little hit and run going. Okay, then. Shortstop tried a nice play. Now Moon overran second base a little bit, heading towards third. And had the shortstop thrown me that play to second, they might have gotten it. But one out, second and third. Excuse me, first and second. 
Now Cody Decker has had some good at bats today a walk his first time up and then a sacrifice fly to score Fuentes in that six run third inning. He also hit the ball sharply but grounded out his last time up so 0 for 1 officially. Barely missed outside. Indians took a 3 nothing lead. The Royals scored six times in the third inning. And Cleveland came back with single tallies in the fourth and fifth and two in the sixth. Royals have 37 players left in Major League camp. Just off the plate now a 3 1 count to Cody. I remember last night Salvador Perez had a 3 1 count looking fastball and got it exactly where he wanted and homered to left field. Cody versus Cody. All right, all right. Well, he took a mighty rip and he was trying to give the Royals the lead back. Yep, he knew that fastball was coming. He'll expect another one here. Especially after getting that result. Now let's see if he's got the two strike approach. And can slice a line drive like he did last night trying to score Fuentes from first. Popped up foul territory. Aguiar is able to make the play no advance. Now we'll get a chance to see Raul Mondesi. Boy, has he been outstanding this spring, particularly on the defensive side. And we have to remind ourselves that Raul Mondesi is only 20 years old. Won't turn 21 until July. Fresh legs, can fly, get soft hands, good fielder. Offensively, he's shown he's very capable. Nine for 28. That's a 321 average. Just hasn't had a lot of production in the minors. You know, hadn't had full seasons. He's had a few injuries. But he's always been the youngest player in his class. I mean, last year started the year at double A and was only 19 years old, and that's usually a league where there's 22, 23-year-old young men. But you know, when you have his pedigree, where he's from, and his dad was a longtime big leaguer, and, and he's been around big league players, and especially the Royals the last two springs, he's a very confident young man. And believe me, when you're the only one in Major League history to make your debut in the World Series, that's awesome. When you're the only one in, in anything in baseball, that's impressive. Hit 243 in Double A Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas last year. And you get the feeling uh, that he's a little like Francisco Lindor that once he makes it to the major leagues, that's where he's really going to shine. Yep, I, I agree with that. And I'm not the only one who believes that. Ned Yost, he's the man in charge on the field. Date Moore, he yields to Ned. He lets Ned make the decisions. And as far as starting his big league clock, Dayton was telling me he doesn't believe in that. He'll, he, he lets the skipper do his thing. He makes, Ned makes the moves down on the field. He gives Ned his opinion and the kid's good enough to help the team, you know, he'd make the team. In the best interest of Mondesi and also the organization, it'd be great to see him play all year long in the minor leagues and Infante and Cologne play, have, have a really excellent 2016 season. Yeah, ideally, that's what they'd like. 
some more development time for him. Well, big league. Allen strikes him out. That's a big league curveball from a big league closer. Yep. is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated or delimited without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Club. Delineated. That's the word I learned last night from Ryan. <laughs> Delineation. Indeed. David Huff is the new Kansas City pitcher. I heard Michael Lefevre had some fun with his dad last night. Oh, it's great I, to I, have the young Lefevre. I texted Lefevre's. Ryan after the game about that. That's hilarious. It was great. His boys came down, Micah and Evan. So here we go with David Huff. With Oklahoma City last year, a solid 2.2 ERA. And Huff has really looked good for Kansas City. And pushing for that final bullpen spot, former starter with the Cleveland Indians. He got out of a jam earlier this week, Hud, where the bases were loaded, nobody out. Huff got a pop up and a double play ground out in a tight game. He's made seven appearances. Line to Clint Barnes. So Giovanni Urshela will bat for the first time. Came on defensively for Juan Uribe. Urshela did a nice job for the Tribe last year when they called him up about halfway through the season. Solidified third base. Made all the plays and then some. But you know, they, they'd like to give him another year in the minors with his bat. Try to get him a little bit more consistent at bats. Yeah, he hit 225 last year with six home runs and will ground out here for the second out. But they say outstanding defensively at the hot corner. So here is Colin Cowgill who came in relief of Tyler Naquin who was continuing his success this spring. All Naquin did today was go three for three, two home runs and a double and is now let's see here 17 for 38 this spring. Calgill last year with the Los Angeles Angels. He was a reserve outfielder. 
and wound up hitting 188 with one home run for the Halos. Royals will have one final chance. Top of the ninth inning, scheduled hitters Clint Barmas, Whit Merrifield, and Frank Schwindel. Now go way out in front of that off speed pitch. Nice changeup on a 3 1 count. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, the, the Royals have so many good players that just, there's just not enough room on their team. Well, one of the great things that has happened, I think, probably because of the Royals' culture, is all of a sudden players want to come to Kansas City. They see what's taking place, they see the energy and the enthusiasm, and they want to be part of that. Why not? Chance to go back postseason. Adam Moore, he spent a little time with the Royals. I remember him hitting a home run into the Royals bullpen. This guy has always had big time power. Suffered a knee injury early in his career, which really set him back, and he's a catcher. Foul off. Came from Seattle to Kansas City, and he has bounced around, and now at the age of 30. Pitching positives today. Well, Wade Davis was his usual Wade Davis like self. Phase three. Retired all three. Did walk one man, but he was thrown out trying to steal. Chin Ming Wong. Worked a very nice seventh inning. And now David Huff trying to throw a shutout eighth inning. Chris Medlin had trouble commanding his fastball gave up four home runs all four solo home runs two by Tyler Naquin one by Francisco Lindor and the other by Jason Kipnis knocked out of play and the Royals hitting star Raymond Fuentes three for four a couple of RBIs and a run scored Mike Moustakas hit his second home run this spring. Yeah, one and two. A grounder that will find left field, a base hit. So Adam Moore is on. Now the big, strong right-handed batter, Jesus Aguiar. Last year at AAA, hit 19 home runs. Big, strong guy out of Venezuela, just 25 years of age. Tomorrow, the Royals will be at Maryville Park taking on the Milwaukee Brewers and Dylan G will get the start in that one. Aguiar takes a strike one and one. Speed pitch. Yeah, huh? using a lot of changeups.
Got him reaching. Barmer's throw will get him. And that will do it for the Cleveland Indians in the eighth inning. So we head to the ninth inning here in Goodyear. Cleveland by one. the state of Arizona. Here's the game summary between the Royals and Indians. Cleveland with a 7-6 lead. Medlin had a rough start. Naquin was on fire. Three for three, two home runs and a double. And now we'll see Zach McAllister, who is expected to have an important role in the Cleveland bullpen. He's much like Luke Hochaber, tall right-hander. He used to be a starter, now a reliever. And he found fine success last year in the relief role with a 3 ERA in 61 appearances struck out 84 batters in only 69 innings. Well, it's another project that they were able to be successful with moving him from a starter to the bullpen so he can really go hard in the innings he pitches. He, he's got a good 95 mile an hour fastball. Cuts that fastball. Big curve. Facing Clint Barmas who swings at the first pitch right there for him and fouls it straight back. Farmers has been up once, struck out. Quinn Merrifield on deck, and then Frank Schwindel. Royals at one time had a 6 3 lead, but could not hold it. Didn't mean to do it. That would have been a ball up, and now Barmas down in the count 0 2. McAllister started his career. With the New York Yankees, a third round pick in 2006, but then traded to Cleveland in the Austin Kearns deal. Fastball up. One ball, two strikes. Again, he got it on Barmas's hands and Clint unable to keep the bat away from the baseball. Tribe looking for their 11th win. The Royals have 11 victories but 13 losses. Ooh, yeah. In there, beautifully located, and Clint Barmas strikes out. Yeah, beauty there. Curveball. Two pitches is all this big fella needs, although he has four from his starting pitching days, but he mainly fastball curve. Now Merrifield, and he swings at the first pitch, rolls it to Aguiar, and he'll get it to McAllister, out number two. Frank Schwindel had the last Royals extra base hit. Pulled one down that left field line. 
and had himself a double. And that was at, off of Jeff Manship, who had struck out the previous three batters he had faced. There is strike one. Again, our next telecast will be this Saturday against the Oakland A's. Schwindel down the left field line, barely foul. Well, he's got some quick hands. Sure does. He will pull that fastball like that. You got to get them hands through the zone. Two out, nobody on. Seven to six, Cleveland. Wind has reversed course and now blowing out towards left. That could help Frank if he gets one in the air. Instead, he got it on his hands right to Aguiar. Gives it up to McAllister. Game over. Cleveland knocks off KC by a final score of 7-6. to six. We'll come back and wrap things up right after this. Do you take your eyes off?